waste time. It is time for our latest episode of We Made a Podcast. And by latest, we mean latest. (laughs) It's been a while. It's been, what did you say, since June? And both of us were like, uh, awkward. Um, yes, we do want to be professional podcasters, so I suppose part of that means we need to be doing this more frequently and consistently. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we definitely need to have more of a scheduled sort of deliberate approach to this business instead of uh, <laughs> uh, you know, devil may care attitude towards it. Well, we'll put yes. it out where we can put it out. Yes, yes, which I kind of think worked for a little while. Like, we were still making it happen, obviously, but yeah. It's been a while, so apologies to all of our faithful listeners. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's been Your pod- hectic This podcast last still while. exists. <laughs> hectic the yeah, last it, little while. We're yes. not going anywhere. We're just yeah. It's been uh, you know we have all we both have young children and jobs, and you know the economy is always an issue. <laughs> so and. Uh... Yeah, I'll be honest, I was not in a mental, physical, or (laughs) uh, spiritual place to podcast for a while. I would say probably the end of June until recently, like a couple of weeks ago. I was like, okay, Uh, I I feel like I'm back. uh, Well, I'm glad that we didn't rush, though, because, I mean, one thing I've always reminded myself about the podcast is that I really enjoy doing it. Well, the, yes, agree. So, so there are some days where you know you don't feel like recording, you don't feel like podcasting. But you sit down and you know we go, we press record, and then I forget, and I'm having a good time and I'm enjoying it. So mm-hmm. I'm glad you waited until you were back to that. Mm-hmm. So enjoy recording. Otherwise, yes. it's just you feel like a prisoner. <laughs> Someone's behind the camera <laughs> holding the script. You know. Yeah. I should have just subbed in Jordan for a couple of weeks and he could have been like, I will report to you all of the adventures of our... Can you take notes while I'm away? Current times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, uh, I suppose... I don't want to say I suppose. I think the last update I made on the surrogacy was like kind of partly through. Yeah. Yeah. It was you... like a bit past halfway, if I recall. Yeah, Jen is a Suro was the episode. So I guess this yeah. is like part two. Mm-hmm. I suppose, yeah. yeah. I can just wrap it up for everybody. Um, I give us in like two sentences or less. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really great up <laughs> until the last few, couple of weeks, I will say. <laughs> Um, uh, once I hit, I want to say it was like somewhere between 34 and 36 weeks. I was like, I'm good. I, I feel like yeah. I have, um, I've met all my goals for this challenge. Yeah. <laughs> just... Yeah. 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 My body is, is, you know, physically at its limits, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I was looking forward to the end, but then I also at the same time, uh, obviously, I realized this much sooner, but I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna have to actually like birth a child." So I had my no mind wrapped about up. The in last that. step, eh? It's just that that little itty bitty uncomfortable thing at the end, you know? Just yeah. the baby's got to come out. Oh, which is interesting. Did I send you? I definitely sent it to Cassie. A TikTok um, of of. A man who was on, is it Diaries of a... Oh, the Diary of a CEO. Diary of a CEO. Thank you. Um, Stephen Botlett. Yes. Excellent freaking podcast. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Highly recommend um, for anyone out there. Mm-hmm. And this particular guest, forgive me for not knowing his name, um, but he was talking about how when humans became bipedal, our body shape especially females, changed significantly. Uh, So we, to compensate, give birth to our mammal babies much, much, much sooner. And he was saying, and I'd heard this before, but I thought it was some, like, 
maybe a couple of months time difference, right? But he was saying that if we had stayed, you know, mammals that traveled quadrupeds, qu- quadrupeds. Thank you for the word. Um, I feel really yeah. cool, but I know everyone is calling me a dork right now. Well, no, I yeah. no, that's very helpful uh, <laughs> in this particular instance for me, anyway. Um, yeah, if we'd stayed quadrupeds, our mammal babies would be born at around two years gestation. Wow. Yeah. So that's crazy. I think about you know I have Isla in my life, who's my youngest, is about to be three, and I'm trying to imagine her being born at two a year ago and then also being pregnant for two years I can, and seems and wild. on yeah. all fours for two years yeah like, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't forget that part <laughs> yeah yeah a little sidebar not yeah doing the life that we currently live but i guess this is all a byproduct of our brains growing exponentially and then us <clears throat> realizing that we could be a lot more efficient on two feet and so anyways this is all kind of like a big uh circle more or less to come back to the fact that yeah our our babies are technically born like extremely premature and like, super premature it's because mm-hmm. they need to fit through your pelvis yes yeah and your that pelvis has got narrowed s- exactly because yeah we're and, and in order to do that, the the skull can't be fused together. Mm-hmm. It needs to fucking morph. Yeah, and then and then the screaming never stops after that. <laughs> it's just crying forever from from everyone. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, someone's crying. <laughs> yeah, from then all, on in, you know what I mean? All the it's time. just yeah, it's a miracle of life. Yeah, yeah. I've got to say, the screaming has been uh, up and down. <laughs> with my kids but um yeah sorry i don't want to like glaze over the fact that i gave birth to this child um yeah so uh finally i don't want to say finally but like they induced me um and well let's just like just so people can understand and get the full picture Mm -hmm. you guys had an idea of when you were gonna yeah so they were planning on inducing me sooner deliver the yeah. Goods. Yeah. However, there was a major issue at my local hospital, uh, and that being that there were no beds in the L and D. Um, labor which, and delivery. Labor for and delivery. The yeah. Yes, and um, this caused my induction date to get pushed like almost a week, and I was a little bit peeved. <laughs> To say the least. Or a lot, or a lot. Like yeah. it's okay to For be many, honest. Many <laughs> reasons. But yeah, I it was like every single day. I was also at the same time like hoping I would just spontaneously go into delivery because right. then they had like it would suck in the hospital because they have to find you a bed. But it's like their problem. You don't give a But fuck. it becomes yeah, it becomes like, okay, well, this is kind of we'll make it work situation. Yeah. Um because you know, like I said, I was I was ready for this baby to be born, um, and I, I I shouldn't go into like too much detail about like how uncomfortable I was, but I will say I had such bad heartburn that I it had gotten to a point that almost everything triggered my heartburn. Oh no. And, yeah, so like every meal I was eating like a very small amount and it was usually like vegetables, which is great. It was like very healthy food. Uh anything that was not Delicious. good for me. Yeah, it made my heartburn worse. So it it encouraged me to like make good eating choices, but also I felt like I was a rabbit because yeah. all I was eating pretty much was vegetables and like drinking so much water and fluids and stuff just to like not dehydrate because it was also atrociously hot out summertime babies yeah and um my mom so my brother's born july 5th and i got to experience a little bit of what my mom went through um in a very different way obviously but like 
she, I remember her talking about how uncomfortable and swollen she was. And she was like, I was just ready for your brother to be born. She demanded an induction <laughs> when my brother was born. Like she was just like, get him out. Um, and so I was like, I, I can relate. I can see how you were, you know, ready to welcome this new life, you know? And, so um, funny. yeah. So, uh, got to bond with my mom over that <laughs> little bit. And, uh, yeah. So th it ended up like it all worked out, you know, in the wash, we'll say, um, with the induction, you know, uh, the intended parent, he was able to be there. Yeah. Instead I mean, of you like were getting quite a uncomfortable, call, but yeah instead of like get him getting he, a call you know? in the middle of the night i think he was like he was just like ready whenever it was about to happen you know what i mean like he was just well, like, and i'm just thinking like when i order two-day delivery and it's late <laughs> amazon like, fucking, yeah i'm pissed you know <laughs> yeah what's going and, on here you promised right and and it was like just a series of like stop and go kind yeah. of feeling at the, at the end the delivery driver you're not even responsible you know well the, pretty much yeah but you're yeah. the only one there to get to get the flack so it's just yeah you know, don't shoot the messenger i like the uh i like that analogy metaphor <laughs> delivery driver <laughs> um here's it's your goods. super duper marginalizes your whole experience but it is funny so it's like casual yeah yeah, yeah. um and yeah, so anyways, obviously the the induction happened. I later found out that induction deliveries are like way more intense apparently, and I I did feel that way, but I also felt that way because uh Kai was born. Kai is the kid. Kai is the baby. And um Is that you know, they... for Kyle? No, just oh, K A I. Man. Um <laughs> And then, yeah, they do the the same sort of procedure if it was your own kid. So they just put the baby on your chest because it's like, where else are you going to put the baby? And then... They didn't have any beds. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are short of beds. So, uh, and man. I don't want to say ironically, but like the day I was in for an induction, there was a woman there in labor. There was a woman there in labor emergency C-section. Oh. And then there was me. That was just like at the same time. That was just Friday morning, you know, for Busy for them. To the weekend, my God. Yeah, and I was like, oh my gosh, these poor nurses and doctors. Like, this is just wild. Um, and yeah, they kind of they like tidy you up, we'll say, in a nice way. And then she was like, whenever you're ready, let me know. Like, I'll go get the dad and he can come in and i was like okay yeah i'm good like bring him in and i wanted him to be there for all the initial sort of like weighing the baby and like all the initial checks so that he could see that happening and and feel confident that you know everything was good instead of it being like secondhand information yeah. um i i think i was more concerned about him being involved than he was like he was just like whatever you want like carte blanche pretty much yeah. like if he you don't even care. want me here yeah, yeah i will accept that like you're bringing me a baby so uh no big deal <laughs> uh so yeah they did all like they weighed him and they put him on the scale and it comes out in grams and i am so unfamiliar with like the concept of grams when measuring a newborn yeah and i also balanced. couldn't really see i'm looking at the screen and I was like, what does that say? Does that start with a four? And I was like, is that four, whatever? Anyways, I forget the exact grams, but they translated it to pounds and ounces. And it was 10 pounds, six ounce baby. And I was like, what? <laughs> like all of us collectively, all of our mouths dropped. Like my midwife was looking at me, like her mouth completely like, oh, my god and then i asked her later what's the biggest baby you've ever delivered she's like this one no this way. is the baby yeah i I'm thought like, william oh. i mean i don't know william was nine something yeah and i was like that's but i didn't that's realize that was like is it i thought it was just nine pounds is i feel like to me healthy. anything i don't over, know though, right? i guess but like to me anything over eight pounds starts is like big okay. anything over nine 
Huge. What's huge? What's small then? Uh, I would say like six and under. Yeah. Okay, and if you're between six and eight, we just don't care. Between six and eight, like- uh, to me, that's like that's what you want to hear. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you're like, okay, this is like this is a manageable size. Yeah. They would just lie to you anyway. I'm sure they could tell you how how much the baby weighs before you even give birth. Like, no, it's well, just it's what's seven pounds. Don't even worry about it. What's interesting is that he was like charting big all along, but then. They said Anson was a big baby too. Yeah. Um. So I was like, whatever. Like, didn't think too much of it. And then we were talking about it on the day of the induction, and I was like, we're kind of feeling out like, how big do you think this baby will be? If he's been measuring big this whole time, and uh, yeah, my midwife said like in the eights, and then Jordan was like low nines. I was like, I think it's gonna be big. Yeah, I think it's gonna be big. And you're yeah. Bang on too. Yeah. Yeah. He's- massive child pretty massive and he was like 22 and a half inches long like super That's long, long. Too. yeah yeah like so child Not the just weight dense. <laughs> yeah the weight was like distributed because like to look at him you weren't like oh my god he's an enormous baby he just looked like a little swaddly cuddly baby who was like anyways they joked that i gave birth to a toddler <laughs> i was like <laughs> great super well, duper. you know back to your earlier point too about like imagining isla being born at two yeah i was like yeah picture that except for zero concept of the world around her yeah zero ability to just running into shit tearing yeah. things apart like it's like getting a puppy yeah and and leaving us on its own like it, it's just bizarre because i don't think anything else comes innately like Mm-hmm. animals that are born fully developed or walk and swim in the same day mm-hmm. and i'm thinking about eating and and going to the bathroom type stuff yeah 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 and i'm like a two a two a two-year-old newborn would still have to be in diapers like i don't think they would just understand <laughs> yeah his most l- two-year-olds don't even clock. fucking use the toilet you know a loin clock could you imagine it so um this begs a lot of questions, I think, because, you know, our brain grew and developed beyond, which caused us to stand on two feet, which caused babies to be born sooner. Are they learning all this stuff sooner than they would if they were still in utero for two years? And they would just come out behaving like a newborn, but aged. No. You know what oh, I yeah, mean? yeah, yeah. I think I think they'd come out behaving like a newborn. Now, yeah, if we if we still like I I'm, I'm assuming if if we gave birth to to fully developed humans, at, yeah, if women <laughs> walking uh, at, at, at around twenty four months, mm-hmm. they'd be able to walk. They'd be able to do all these things, but I don't think they'd have. Like I don't know the word I'm looking for, like the 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 instincts that that animals right. are born with, right? Uh, okay. It, uh, unless the world Maybe. around us is, has forced those instincts to remain relevant, like yeah, yeah, everything that that drives us is is a survival mechanism, but we mm-hmm. are actually in danger. That's why. But fucking people we're need also therapy. thinking we're thinking of it with our big modern day human brain, whereas we wouldn't have been modern humans so our brains would have been performing differently you're right i guess it's hard to yeah it's hard to picture the two-year-old being born Mm -hmm. that way in this world Mm -hmm. yeah 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 Yeah, that'd be tricky because if it was if it was you know just it would just be history then (laughs) if it was the other way yeah they were born at 24 months whatever like neanderthals or whatever we were before all yeah that. yeah <laughs> yeah and then the humans and then it wouldn't be a problem because like they do have those survival instincts and they would but bringing it forward if we could uh-huh. give birth at 24 months i really don't think like you would just be dealing with a just a lot more drool a lot more shit you know way more poopies yeah, yeah i think yeah. so i think so i'm thinking like, of like all the ultrasounds you- you have to go through oh. be like you oh, probably yeah, have to be charting. on bed rest for a whole year like the whole oh, second yeah. half 
Yeah. Or like a hydrotherapy <laughs> tub so that you could just like not atrophy. Ooh, you know? That would be nice. You don't get yeah. bed sores that way. Yeah. Our, our neighbors next door have a pool and they were like, use the pool if you want. And there was one day where Anson was like, come on, let's use the pool. And I'm not one to take my neighbors up on offers like that. Like I feel, I feel awkward being like, yeah, I'll just pop over to your place well, while you're gone you think, and you, use your you, thing. You think they're just being nice. You think they're like, right. oh, we'll say the right thing. Yeah, yeah. But in your mind, you're like, they don't actually mean it because why would anyone do anything like that for me? Right. But yeah. in reality, they put it out there because they see someone who is pregnant as fuck. Yeah, yeah. In the middle of the world's <laughs> hottest fucking summer. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, girl, get yourself hey, in the girl. pool. And, yeah. and Anson, like, like, like all children are like dogs. They can mm-hmm. sense the goodness of people. Oh. He's like, Mama, he means it. Let's go. Let's go in the pool. And they really meant it because they put all of their pool toys out and all of the stuff. Like, they oh, put yeah. uh, water wings for Anson out. They're like, we don't know if you like have how any. more obvious could it have been? They could have just yeah. cut a hole in the fence and, and were like they, dragged you over. They, um, yeah, they almost picked me up and put me in the pool for me. But it was what? awesome. We just like lounged in the pool and then we made like a whirlpool by running around in circles and that was that was awesome. And it made Anson's whole flipping day because he was like, We got to go in the pool. It's like, yeah, dude. Yeah, we did. And then does he then want to continue going in the pool? Well, he'd asked again. Um I wanna say it was like the week of my induction and things were like all over the place. Like we had them in daycare one day and then not. And yeah. then we were like, actually, we do need them in daycare again. And like it was such a mess to try and coordinate child care so that Jordan could be with me. Anyways, it, it all. Yeah. So we were like, uh, I don't know if we'll get to go again. Yeah. And Jordan was like, hard pass. I'm not taking them up on that offer. Um, that's very nice of them. And he's like, but clearly it's for you. <laughs> he's yeah. like, they're not inviting me to the pool. Yeah. 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 You know what though? That said, I would, I would have done the same thing. I would. Mm-hmm. I like, unless like you knew them really well, you know, like they were your oh, friends totally. and totally. neighbors, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Otherwise yeah. you're like, if they're just neighbors, but they're friendly, you mm-hmm. get to a point where you feel like you're just taking advantage of it. Yes. And yeah, I don't want to. I don't like want to have to owe somebody something, you know. Yeah, you got to pay them like 20 bucks a month just to cover chlorine costs or, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? <laughs> Dirty ass kids yeah, in totally. the pool. Yeah, so then after, uh, I guess, recovery is kind of standard. We did have uh, what Jordan would call uh, the most terrifying moments of his life, I think. Um, don't quote me on that. I'm paraphrasing. But uh, he was quite worried (laughs) for me because, yeah, uh, what the medical community refers to as a big bleed uh, occurred. And I was told my heart rate dropped quite low and I, yeah, lost a lot of blood. So he was, uh, like, he told me there was, like, at one point we were going to sleep for the night and he was like, you looked gray. like. It was not good. And, like, my midwife didn't leave until 9.30 at night. And I was, like, on another playing field, you know? Like, I was not registering that it was as serious, maybe, as as it was. Um, a lack probably of a good thing. The brain will, will do that to you. Yeah. <laughs> Pro- probably for, for good reason. But, uh, yeah, she just kept checking on, like... Making sure that I wasn't going yeah. to die on her in the middle no, of the sure. night. You can never be yeah. too careful when it comes yeah. to losing a, a lot of blood. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and then they had me, uh, they transfused a unit of blood in the morning. And I've never had that done before. So that was interesting. Um, and then I don't want to say the fun, um, like, side uh side story if you will Uh, like a side story of all this was like i've been part of a surrogate support group and like i felt like my group was very very cool like everybody's like super positive and 
shared their journeys along the way and like anyways i really enjoy and I, i'm still a part of the same group because like we still message each other here and there hey how you guys doing whatever um and yeah getting to like tell them that the baby was born was exciting also nice. uh, yeah. and getting kind of like because I think there were only like three or four of us that hadn't had our babies and it was all based on like a transfer date that it had occurred within seven day period. Um, So yeah, it was just interesting. There was like quite a broad spectrum because one woman gave birth very early, like at 26, 27 weeks, like past the viability period, but like still before 30. Um, and so things were touch and go for, for that baby for a little while. Um, and then the last person to give birth, she was just like, I'm waiting as long as possible. Like, I don't want this baby to come out anytime soon. And the rest of us were like, I can't relate. Like, I just, <laughs> really? <Get out. laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, she ended up giving birth. I think it was close to 40. It was like 41 weeks and a couple days, something like that. So. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's so and uh, Yeah. So that was fun, like, kind of getting to share that with other people who'd been through a similar experience. It was very, very cool. Um, yeah, and, and the then I've had a couple... Part where... Sorry. No, I, I was going to say, uh, I've had a couple people ask me, like, since he's been born, uh, how do you, like, is it weird? Like, my relationship with them now and uh i'm like i guess it is kind of weird like it's not a usual relationship right but i said i feel like a kind of an aunt yeah a, i would i would yeah liken it to being an aunt to this child it, a little bit it, you can feel a connection but it's pretty distant yeah and, yeah and like not worthy enough for like a text on your birthday kind of thing like we're not related. Yeah. But uh I knew this baby for nine months. <laughs> um and I remember like handing Kai over to Terry and he was just like beaming and so excited. And um he was like after a few minutes, he's like, Do you wanna hold him? Like worried that he was taking the baby too much. And I was like I've just held him for nine months. Like you take your time. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, you use your arms. I used my belly. It's uh... yeah, same, same, but different. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's been, that's been pretty cool. And like, uh, I've texted just like on the one, the, the months, uh, month anniversaries, I guess. Right. I don't know if that's what you call them, but I'm just like, Hey, how are things? It's two months in, like, tell me, tell me what's new. And, are you okay? Because yeah. he also has a two-year-old. So, um, yeah. Brutal. Yeah, so gonna, he's busy. I was going to ask, it, you know, the nature of my job. I join mm-hmm. new groups all the time. And mm-hmm. we always coordinate using text messaging. And uh, so you're always joining these group chats. And ah, yes. After a while, like, there, I still have a group chat from the course I did two years ago. Mm-hmm. And and it's like when you leave that group chat, when are you allowed to stop contributing to the group chat? Right. So, so I'm like, I'm wondering about the surrogacy. Like, when do you? Does it slowly just fade away and and die? Or the other girls, like once once their you know services have been rendered, mm-hmm. uh, do they just you know stay in to offer support? For or do they ask questions? Mm-hmm. Is, is it like? pre and post type stuff or eventually you're just going to stop using that group chat and I, I wonder what that looks like i agree i i do wonder what that looks like too and um i don't know what this particular group will look like there have been like a few sort of like post partum updates of people being like hey have you noticed this or you know it's it's been uh for me like a little over eight weeks so um we're all kind of in that ballpark of time. And uh, there was one woman who was like, hey, is this, 
a normal thing to be experiencing like a physiological thing anyway and so it's good to have a bit of feedback um from other people going through the same thing more or less um just like what direction do i go like is this a do i call my doctor or is this something that you know you can take a couple pills for um there were a few women who pumped for the ba- their baby their sero baby um uh, afterwards and so they've kind of like i guess it kind of extends the experience a little bit longer yeah that's because true they're they're like more involved still um, connected to the whole process yeah 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 so a, a couple of them who are trying to like wean they're like what can i do and uh benadryl seems to be the number one recommendation for anyone wondering <laughs> uh dries up milk supply pronto so you take the benadryl uh like whoever wants Is to stop breastfeeding yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So regardless if so, okay. I guess my question is: the ladies that are pumping are they mm-hmm. are they still in the same vicinity as the baby to provide that milk for the baby, or are they just pumping and dumping kind of thing? Uh pumping and either shipping it or like delivering it, or vice, like having the parent the parents come pick it up every right. yeah, few weeks or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does Benadryl work for people who are? breastfeeding their own children and then weaning oh yeah yeah Mm -hmm. apparently it's like it's it's the it's the go-to yeah because they talk about cabbage leaves and there's certain teas you can drink and things like that that help kind of like gently dry things up but yeah benadryl was like the number one uh what would you say like milk supply (laughs) ending (laughs) <laughs> medication oh, yeah man. that's so funny that's weird too yeah. like an allergy medicine yeah whatever's in it i guess it just it doesn't compute so did you ever have to take any allergy medicine while you were breastfeeding like did it mm. interrupt your your supply at all when you were if you if i don't know it's a weird one to have to look back that far because i feel like mm-hmm. it's been a super long time but i i honestly haven't used much allergy medication in my life like i've used it a couple times um i sh- like i could definitely stand to use it more but uh yeah no it, only because i haven't yeah, used sure. it it's not yeah. like it would have been an accident i think if i yeah right yeah fair enough well wow, holy yeah. smokes three Anywho. kids later <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes 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 I remember asking you how you're feeling, how you're doing and all that kind of stuff. Cause I think everyone around you was, was wondering mm-hmm. what it would be like. And, you know, postpartum's a tough time for anyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And so, you know, I think we we're, everyone was just wondering how you were doing after you'd given birth. And mm-hmm. so one of the first things you said to me was, well, I don't friggin' miss getting up every two hours. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, that kind of just said it all for me. It was a, yeah. a really interesting experience, but I feel like you had the right headspace the whole way through. And, uh, yeah. Enjoyed like I knew, it for I what, knew it what was. I was getting yeah. into. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Um, what was I going to say? It was tied into what? Oh, uh, yeah, I had I had a few friends kind of like ask, like, are you? are you doing okay? Like postpartum is uh, very hormonal. So sometimes it's like, even out of anyone's control, like how you're feeling. And I remember a couple of days, like waking up and just being sad. Yeah. And I was like, I will just allow myself to be sad. And then I'm sure tomorrow will be better. And uh, yeah, Jordan was like very um, aware of where I was at because like he I think he's able to read me better than I can sometimes and so there are a few times he was like are you okay and I'm like I'm just sad today like with tears in my eyes just like yeah I'm just it's sad okay. today just yeah a good cry whoa yeah. wow was it daylight my, there all of a sudden my other light died I had to oh uh... <laughs> 
Right on. There we go. Uh, for for the ones who are just listening, Colin just turned the sun on in his yeah, basement. I found it. Yeah. I found it. It was hot. It was really, yeah. really hot. Super tempered. I got it hot. Um, um, yeah. So, I mean, obviously there, there are ups and downs with it, which is, which is expected, I think. Um, but overall, like I'm feeling, I'm feeling quite good. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And if anyone else out there was interested in zeroing, mm-hmm. um, what would you, what tips, tricks, any advice tips you'd offer anyone? Of the trade. Don't do uh, it. Uh, <laughs> No, I feel like in my heart, like I was tell- talking to Jordan about this and I was like, I think I could just do this. I could be one of these people who just does it again and again. Like, I don't know. There's something very fulfilling uh, and so like a big sense of. <laughs> so fucking selfish. <laughs> just farming uh, babies so you can feel good. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness. And uh, there's like a purposeful aspect to it like you know it's like a much greater purpose than just my day-to-day life right yeah Um, yeah your day-to-day life is just so lacking purpose (laughs) like come on just motherhood you know no (laughs) big deal (laughs) oh my god um yeah but i don't know i think uh i don't think i'll ever have the feeling of like i'm done um i think i have to force myself to be done you know what I mean? Like if I have these no, invasive but... thoughts of like, oh, I could do that. I have to shut it down. I think because it's uh, I, this one was a lot for for every like obviously for my body it was like quite a test uh and scary for Jordan to watch me go through that. Um, I think scary for my midwife too. Like she followed up with me and was like, "Are you? How are you?" <laughs> And I don't know if she's like that with everyone, like if yeah. that's just the way she is. But um, yeah, I got the impression that she was like, what, uh, you know, you know, offering tips and tricks to people. I guess. Mm-hmm. You, Sorry, you, and then go ahead. No, no, it's fine. I, I was just going to say, you know, there are a lot of other people involved. Um, mm-hmm. It's not just you; mm-hmm. it's mostly you. Mm-hmm. Um, but like Jordan and the kids and stuff, if, if, if someone else was trying to do this and they had a, a full family around them as well, what would you, mm-hmm. what would you offer them in terms of wisdom? Oh, I feel like the best was like the best information that was shared with me was, uh, there was a list of books actually that, uh, perfect. Every guy s- likes reading and they're short, they're like short, oh. uh, like kids style story so it's like a lot of picture books yeah 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 that were that i got from mostly the library i think i bought a couple of them um but i i got the rest from the library and uh read them with the kids so it was like what makes a family jordan for a second this makes more sense oh i see yeah it was like what makes a family there's uh and tango makes three there's um Oh my gosh, I'm going to forget all the names now. But anyways, I, I had a bunch of them and I would read them. We would read them as bedtime stories to the kids for a while um, just to kind of like give them an idea of like, this is the experience that we're all about to go through without right. making it sound so serious like that. You know what I mean? And the language that I used was we are growing a baby for someone else. I was like, mommy is growing the baby physically, but we are all helping grow this baby so that this other family can have it. And uh, I feel like that language really helped the kids not be put off by it. Um, Because I think, you know, especially if you have older kids who like really grasp the concept of like there's a baby growing inside of you like my kids are young Mm -hmm. isla won't remember uh anson might but he's on the fence he won't remember (laughs) much if he does yeah yeah exactly and um yeah so if you have older kids i feel like the language that you use in approaching the whole situation is gonna 
help set them up for success if you word it in like a positive way and i feel like that was a positive way of introducing it to them um and then it also like anton loves talking to people so when we'd go to the grocery store or something i remember one lady asking him oh are you excited to be a big brother uh and i can't remember if isla was there with us or not again not my brother just walks away (laughs) yeah and uh he was like oh mommy's mommy's growing this baby for someone else and the woman looked at me and she was just like oh my gosh like she was just like her heart grew three sizes that day like the grinch you know like she was just like very excited that we were doing this and like and that he's i think that he said it like that too like she just well, and i mean yeah something. it's not just uh, a pregnancy it's like a whole i won't say family activity it's a little perverse to say right that, but, but the idea that you know he's like involved he understands he's able mm-hmm. to speak intelligently about it as a young child mm-hmm. a, it means that uh you're having conversations with him it's probably more to do with the fact that you know you guys are both great parents and oh, not just shunning your children, you know, you're including them, involving them, making sure that they're aware because, you know, the whole time you're regularly pregnant, you know, with mm-hmm. one of your own, you're mm-hmm. always involving the kid. Like you're going to be a brother, sister, blah, blah. Like it's easy right. for them to stay involved and, and feel included and not feel like they're being cast aside kind of thing. But, when this new version of you is about to be produced so yeah 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 but this one actually that's true too like he he knows that it's not a newer version of him so he doesn't have to yeah. worry about it yeah there but, was no change in his uh hierarchy and I'm seniority sure level with another yeah. person great yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 that's awesome i'm, I'm really happy I think, that he's able to do that i think the dog got worried because she was like looking at me sometimes like you're getting another one of these there's another one of these joining us. Like, are you are you for real? <laughs> <laughs> and then you go to the hospital and come back, and Mabel's like, "Oh God, she changed her mind. Thank God, <laughs> it's gone." Oh, thank yeah. God. yeah. Oh, you yeah, adopted. Stress... Good choice. <laughs> her stress level decreased significantly. <laughs> um, that was another thing that you know, being induced ended up being convenient. I don't want to say convenient, but like being able to actually schedule my life a little bit was knowing we're putting the dog in the kennel and yeah. when she comes back like instead we will be able to take care of her yeah instead watch of and shoot watch and shoot right like, i have no yeah. idea when this is gonna happen but yeah these seven things yeah. have to happen within three minutes of going into labor so i better be ready at all times <laughs> right can you imagine being like what are we doing with the dog you know what i mean like <laughs> Just fill the <laughs> fill the tub with dog food and walk away. <laughs> she'll figure it out. She'll, yeah, she'll take care of herself. She's pretty good. Yeah. Come back and find her passed out in the tub. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's another piece of advice. If you have a pet, uh, try and have some sort of care plan in place. Re- read to like, your pet, too. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if they started writing? If somebody <laughs> wrote a book for your dog? Just How to, to understand. Your... Yeah. Uh, you know what though, oh, man. In my my first thought when you said that was you just tapped into a million dollar market with that idea. <laughs> Books for parents? owners to read to their fucking dogs or their pets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Can you imagine. It so your mommy exists. has depression, and it's like, I'm sorry, I don't pet you as much. <laughs> you know what I mean? All this crazy okay. shit. Books for dogs. I'm googling this. Okay, buy dog books. Should I read books for to my dog? it helps kids practice reading builds empathy for pets and socializes our furry friends there's no reason not to try it out with your own pet they made it sound an awful lot like it's only a good idea when children are doing it it's uh purina.com do they sell books uh, i don't know do dogs like it when you read to them dog food (laughs) Dogs find comfort and companionship in having a book read to them. Whether with a pet or a shelter dog, shared reading offers positive interactions that benefit their general welfare. I, wow, I believe that dude. would work with dogs because I feel like, <clears throat> you know that uh, the, I think it's called parallel play? Yes. So 
I think most people do that these days. We just don't realize it. But, you know, before the world was at your fingertips, Mm -hmm. you would spend time with people and and engage them in conversation or activities or or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it would be eye contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Connection happening. Like, you know what I mean? But parallel play is basically. Yeah, you're just in the same space doing your own thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you could be knitting on side the couch by while side by side while Jordan's watching TV or something. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And I feel like dogs are really great for that because they just want to feel wanted. They want mm-hmm. to feel like they're accepted and they're loved and all this kind of stuff. So Part you could of probably the pack. really, yeah, yeah, you could probably get away with reading a lot to your dog. But mm-hmm. I think like you gotta get. <laughs> <laughs> Actong. Actong. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. Um, <laughs> we gotta if if we tag them in that, they might uh they might boost our, our follower content a bit. <laughs> oh man. But um I I, cats, I, I don't think uh, you could read the appreciate cats. No, oh my god, cats would be like, the fuck, man. Imagine trying to hold a cat down and read to it. I I think some unless cats... it was like a slutty romance book where the main Whoa. character was this diva bitch, I think <laughs> the cats would really relate to that character, and maybe then you'd have uh, you'd have success reading to your cat. Perhaps, yeah. I, I think certain cats might benefit from being read too, um, but I have not personally owned these cats. But I I I feel like some of my friends have had cats, and I'm like. Mm-hmm see them being a good read to cat like because they're such loungers and mm-hmm. just like love snuggling and like well love yeah. is a strong word yeah they enjoy yeah. snuggling on their terms only yes yeah don't touch me if i don't want you to but pet me yeah. when i do and if you don't do it right i'll bite you yeah yeah get out my damn house is what they're gonna mm-hmm. say to you because they own everything i have another question Mm-hmm. I'm not like a huge cat person. I don't care mm-hmm. about cats. I, I mm-hmm. mean, you're if, not if a cat kid... dad. No, I don't. I don't. Okay. I don't care. But mm-hmm. I fucking love big cats, like tigers and lions and jaguars and shit. Like the Tiger King level of love. No, and I don't okay. think anyone could love anything the way he loves. <laughs> it's 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 a special brand. Mm-hmm. But uh, I just like I feel like lions and tigers are way too cool to be considered cats because mm. cats mean, are, are pointless but lions and tigers are fucking like you look at these things like if you just mm-hmm. next time you see a full-grown male lion with the fucking hair and everything at mm-hmm. a zoo or on a youtube video or whatever just look at the size of this fucking thing and then mm-hmm. watch it roar and you're like that is a real thing on this planet that i am also on that is a monster yeah I don't understand. And and maybe it's because we're pretty sheltered in Canada and all we have to deal with are like moose and bears and shit. Bears are wild too. Bears are pretty uh, ferocious to me. Yeah. They are. But cats, like big cats, they're a different fucking. Yes, fair. And you know what's scary too? I would never want to come across one. What would be your. The cat you'd least like to have to cross paths with. Well, we have bobcats, don't we? Yeah, but they're tiny compared to. Do 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 we have cougars in Canada? Yep, yeah, mountain lions in BC and shit like that. Okay. Yeah, those ones are I scary because they always I've come up from behind. I've heard they're the most sneaky. Yeah, I've heard yeah. they're the most sneaky. So like, you won't even know they're there, and then you're dead. Yeah, yeah, it's like tigers. They're solo hunters too. Yeah. And they're fucking huge. 800 yeah. pounds. Yeah. It's wild. I mean, truly none of them. I don't think I'd want to come across any of them. Now, honest. you brought up bears. Now, I heard a question asked the other day on a, on a different show, and it was a f- how many full-grown mm-hmm. silverback, like, male, alpha male gorillas? Mm-hmm. To, to take on a full-size 
adult grizzly bear. Is it one to one? Well, the question is how many gorillas to fight the bear. Okay. Win. I'm going to say like two. They're pretty two. fucking strong silverback gorillas, no? Well, it's they are strong. Do we have an they, answer? Or is this have, just hypothetical? Well, the, these guys, the one said five. Five, and the other okay. said three. Three, okay. Now, I mean, the gorillas are strong and shit, but they so don't have... So it's not like ten to one. No. I mean, ten to one and for sure, have, it would win. They have different teeth. Like, their teeth aren't sh as sharp as... Well, that, and that's what the one guy said. He said, yeah. you know, gorillas have the fangs. And then the other guy said, I don't think the fangs would be able to get through the hide on the grizzly bear. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure a few, a few, but not enough to hold on to it before those giant fucking mitts mm -hmm. with knives on the end of them just start slashing all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like their teeth are knives, too. Oh my god, they're just terrifying animals. Yeah, but grizzly, uh, grizzly. Oh my gosh, gorillas are insanely strong. Yeah, and they're athletic yeah. as fuck. Like they can move around and probably, like, yeah, like Floyd Mayweather inside the boxing ring. Yeah, kind of thing, you know like what I mean? just. Oh man, I wonder if there's fast. a place we could go to see this happen. Uh, I bet you Russia does this. <laughs> I'm thinking, like, it would definitely be a black market level place. Do they even call it that? Or is that just, like, the dark, like, is there a different word for that? Is it still called the black market? Uh, yeah, I think the black market's just a general term for buying and selling anything you're not supposed to. Anything illegal? Like, you don't go to it. It's just... Yeah, it's not like you know a I mean? physical market. In... They don't have an open house every year. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Come check out everything, like an expo kind of thing. A little fall this, fair, yeah. Coming to the black market this year, gorillas yeah. versus grizzlies. <laughs> yeah, but maybe somewhere now, in the dark. here's the next question. Oh. Okay, go. Would you be able to watch that fight? <sighs> Somebody has to lose. Yeah, but would you want to watch them fight each other? I would don't think I that? would need to watch it, but I think I would be curious to know the results. Yeah, like you kind of wake up in the morning and check your iPhone to see what happened, but be like, not, like staying up to to live. Stream. Yeah, like I'd be like, I don't like that this is happening. This is pretty yeah, dark. I feel, I feel the same way. Like I don't like things getting hurt mm -hmm. just for fun, you know, mm -hmm. just for sport. Fun, like, yeah, it's almost science. But it's almost, I, and maybe not on the black market because I'm sure that they're not like. You know, five star recruit gorillas and Olympic right. grizzly bears. You know what I mean? Yeah, it'd be like sure those illegal like underfed fucking. It? <laughs> it's the gorillas that the zoo maybe didn't want anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? You better perform, or you're leaving Cincinnati. And you're going to fucking <laughs> Russia, where you got to fight a grizzly bear. Mm -hmm. It'd be like they're already in jail. And then they'd have, yeah, yeah a be beyond. Now, I'm picturing a movie where it's a fight club for animals. And when they win, it's like Gladiator. They win their freedom. Okay. They get to leave oh. the zoo. Yeah. And then go to a sanctuary. Well, no. No. They'd have to leave the zoo and then survive the real world. It's like Shawshank Redemption. Mm -hmm. Shawshank Redemption? Is that what it's called? Shawshank. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Sha just Shawshank, isn't it? Well, Shawshank Redemption, I think. Like one buddy, separate. one buddy, one buddy uh, gets released from prison. He ends up killing himself because he can't. Spoiler stand alert! I mean, if you haven't seen it, it. is Shawshank Redemption, nineteen ninety four. Yeah, I mean, it's been mucho tempo, years? as they say. Is it tempo? Oh. Yeah. Time. Tiempo? Yeah, 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 yeah. Most of my language understanding is pure guesswork. Oh, okay. So I'm going to say yes. You're like, oh, who knows? Yeah. Right. What I'm going to look that up too. A long time. Yeah. It's been mucho Jim. Oh, man. What Sorry. Are so uh, I've consumed this whole episode. I apologize. No, you haven't. 
We spent a lot of time talking about fighting animals. <laughs> it's okay. Woo! Yeah, all good. We went from um, too extreme. Mm-hmm. Not really. We were talking about how humans used to be real mammals. And then That's we're true. talking about mammals. We mm-hmm. should stop having those kinds of conversations like just now because it makes it look like we didn't plan everything to just have this whole sort of like naturalistic law yeah yeah through, yeah throughout the episode mm-hmm. i don't think people appreciate how unprepared we come into these things i have an idea and it is this i <laughs> sorry i felt the i felt <laughs> I felt like Michael Scott for a second when he's like, sometimes I start a sentence and I just hope that I find it along the way. Anyway, um, we've been doing OK Boomer in some episodes and um, not OK Boomer. Is it is that what we called it? Now I'm like second guessing. Segments? Yeah, where we were like, this is a boomer expression yeah. or this is something that boomers do a bunch. Anyway, so in. Um, the spirit of not feeling middle-aged. I was hoping that we could deep dive into the expressions that Gen Alpha are using. Man, that's a great idea. Because you know I, I know a few. I know quite a few. Okay? Apparently let's, when you say guillat, that means yeah. you see some hot... That's, that's some hot, hot gal. A slang that, term to express strong excitement, surprise, or, or admiration. Mm-hmm. Oh. Gat is most commonly used as an ex- exclamation in reaction to seeing a large butt and may be used yes. as a noun to mean a large butt. Yeah. And for it, all the haters out there, this is from dictionary.com. Not even Urban <laughs> Dictionary. This is <laughs> this is legit. Yeah. This is an actual definition. Uh there's I don't know phantom tags. So it's F A N O M tags. I only heard this one on uh, the bit Stephen Colbert did. I was going to say Colbert, yeah. And oh he's like, God. you don't know what it means either. <laughs> Welcome to hell, bitch! Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, the theft of food between friends. The hmm. theft of food between friends. Originally coined I by need, American I'm gonna, streamer I'm gonna Phantom. Need, I'm going to need like a, an example in real time, real life. So, like, if if you and I were sitting at the table, you and you stole my food, Oreo cookie, and I just reached over, phantom tax, and I just take your food and eat it. Oh, it's like dad tax, for no mom reason tax. whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's between friends, so that's the that's the title of the tax instead of mom tax or dad tax. Mm. Before you give your child a delicious treat, you take a piece right in front of them to watch their mm-hmm. fucking dreams die. Um, you do. I that just got to make sure friends. this is still good. Yeah, exactly. That's check what I say for, every time. Yeah, yeah. Just I check for ch- poison. I gotta make sure it's still good. Yeah, yeah. I had a fucking fiasco today, Olivia. I cut up apples for them as part of their lunch, Uh-oh. and these apples are from apple trees at the cottage. Yes. So they're hella fresh, and so they go brown really fast. Yes. And you Olivia's- gotta dip those suckers in lemon juice. Is that what it is? Uh, yeah. I put okay. lemon juice. You can put vinegar but kids don't like the taste of vinegar on their apples but yeah some lemon juice and then you just dip the cut sides of the apple in it and it'll stop it from going brown because yeah i felt i felt a little bad i was like yeah it does look fucking gross and i don't eat it when it goes brown but i'm trying Mm -hmm. to get you to fucking eat it yeah oh man yeah yeah no back to that we should definitely uh maybe every episode will do one term one new slang term Okay. And that way, us and our audience can piss off the fuck out of our kids and, and the youngers of the youths the of youths. our society. Yeah. yeah. Phantom tax. Because fucking William's saying shit all the time, like skibbity and. Skibbity Ohio Riz. Have you heard that one? With the heck and Bob. And... What the heck yeah. and Bob is me? <laughs> yeah, I know. But that one, that one feels a little bit more like trans generational. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Vintage, yeah. apparently. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm waiting for him to say all these stupid fucking things. Um, Olivia doesn't care as much, but I, I, uh, I, I can send you a few because I downloaded. It's printables for teachers, but I'm hoping to use some of them on my bus, and then I'm hoping to, like, 
translate some of them so that they apply more to like a bus setting. So instead of being like, yeet your cell phone into your backpack during yeet class, I'm into that chair. Right. I'm going to be yeah. like, yeet your food back in your backpack so that. Yeet your yat into your chair. Right. Or your, your bench <laughs> chair. LOL. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Seat. Seat. I think seat is appropriate. Yeah. Is, is there, are there It'll be interesting. Seat belts on your bus? Uh, the only kid who wears a seat belt is the child in the car seat, my daughter. Oh, loser. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you, are you able, did you ever experience sitting at the back on or behind the rear axle on the bus as a child? And the big, a big bump? Oh, yeah. Do you do that to your children, your children, your kids? The kids uh, that I pick Just up at. make their heads smash the roof. They were sitting at the back and they would like, they would like pump up and like get ready for this big bump that they knew was coming. And then they would like launch themselves up and try and touch the ceiling. And I was like, this is getting unsafe. Like, nah, nah. Let I the let them do burn. it the first couple days and I was like, uh, I'm going to need you to move up to like seat 14. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, let the world turn let them let them choose their own path in life i know part of me is like i just want to let them have fun but then you're also like, the one who's gonna it's like a self everything. yeah it's a self-fulfilling prophecy a little bit because like they get so hype about hitting the roof that like they lose their minds and then they're just screaming the rest of the ride and i'm like i can't deal with you like the the bus ride from the elementary school to, to all my stops, like I think the total time is forty minutes at most. Right. Um, it's not long. Like I don't consider that a long time. Hang on, let me do the math. So I pick them up at three forty. My last stop is four fifteen. So what would that be twenty? Thirty five minutes. Thirty five. Yeah, it's not even forty minutes. Like in the winter, it will be on when I have to like drive 60 everywhere but right um yeah anyways what was i getting at it's a very short ride and i'm like you guys can just like control yourselves for like the 15 ah, minutes they it can't. Takes. it's the end of yeah. the, well, especially at the end of the day like i'm sure the end of the day on there. fridays ooh, yeah, lord help out. me lord yeah. help me like i just um, want a monitor only friday afternoons but that's not how it works are you able to like play music and stuff like that? Uh, I can, but I feel like it's a it's a reward system. So I'm not prepared to introduce the music just yet. Part of me was like, I want to play calming spiritual yoga music, like the kind you would listen to in a um like in a spa, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Like a just like get temple. them to chill the fuck yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm gonna Mr. start with this music is junk. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm gonna start with my funny posters. I also got these window um what are they called? Window film kind of stickers. And they're small, they're like maybe three by four inch, and it's like Jesus, and it looks like he's poking his head around the corner. He's like, I saw mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so, so funny. Gonna... Put a couple of those up where I know there's some troublemakers. Yeah, hope for the best, you know. And I, oh my gosh, I've already written kids up. I've already, oh gosh, it's been wild. It's been like three weeks. It, we're it? starting our third week this week. Yeah, it's been oh, two weeks. It's only full been weeks. two weeks. Oh. And it's not even full weeks because the first week was four days. No, our first week was three days. Well, there you go. School started on. Tuesday, it's but it was a fucking PA day. I don't understand. Oh, right, right, right. So Wednesday like, was your first day. Yeah, Wednesday was the yeah. first day. But that's kind of nice. You had an extended I, I mean, little. Thing. Yeah, it, well, no, because I go to work and then the kids stay home. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's just you're like I still have to work. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not the work with the kids is hard. It's that you have to parent while you're working, and that's what's fucking annoying. Yeah, so like, I don't know. It's good that your kids are school age because they can kind of like do their own thing for, for some time, right? That's very right? true. Yeah, yeah. They can for sure occupy themselves. And not like not to diminish that like 
entertaining kids while working is more hard or less Lord. hard I depending on their like age but like yeah I, me. It's all oh, okay <laughs> i i just like it's wild to think that um like some people are i don't say stuck but like there are some days where it's like if your kid's sick they can't go to daycare they can't go to school like they're stuck with you at home well it's and wild. i feel like that's just the the default now i think expectation i feel like pre-core it was yeah there was the you're not going into work you, no yeah well or, or the ability for you to to stay home with your kids was yeah. was far less than it is now i suppose yeah i suppose that's I, true. I, I and i don't know if that's true or not it just may and maybe because they're that sort of precedent hadn't been set where it's totally doable and Mm -hmm. Your your work really doesn't suffer a whole lot when it's like mm -hmm. one day. But. And I will say, sorry, boomers, but like, I think the boomers are very attached to this idea that like work happens at a workplace. Mm -hmm. And um, for us who've grown up being able to do a lot of work remotely like for work or for personal or whatever um it just seems a lot less maybe daunting or or like a lot more possible to yeah, be able it's, to it's, like work remotely yeah yeah and, and you yeah. kind of talked about this earlier when you're talking about you know uh having the conversation with anson and isla reading those books so they understand mm -hmm. your situation uh, and it's like, yo, I don't want to confuse them. I want to make sure they understand. But kids take everything at face value. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They don't make assumptions. They don't they have any assume you're being honest. Yeah. yeah, they they just believe everything because they haven't been conditioned by society to know what normal is. So, yeah, like they're not going to go in and be like surrogacy. What's surrogacy? Like you're having someone yeah. else's kid. That's so. Why would you do that? Yeah. Kids oh, like, I oh. didn't even touch on this. Oh my gosh, when I had to tell my bus kids last year that i was leaving oh my gosh it broke my heart oh really yeah sorry i'll uh, please finish what you were saying and then i will well I, will. I was just gonna talk about how fucking shitty boomers are for the same reason uh, they they grew up you know connected to nothing they yes. their 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 whole world was their neighborhood and and you know if they traveled, great, but most people didn't. Yeah. And they, they followed the same path that we've all been told to follow. And, and they that don't they question, were told, yeah. Yeah, they don't question anything. They take they take everything at face value. And they the problem, too, is is I feel like a lot of boomers now, if they're seeing sort of the writing on the wall that maybe, maybe they're a little closed-minded, maybe their way wasn't <laughs> the best, maybe generation after generation uh hasn't been going so well up until yeah. that point uh, survivor's bias i think they call it yeah that's probably mm -hmm. a really great way of looking at it but man mm -hmm. boomers are so wrong about so many things and for that reason we have a lot of these conversations where it's like who are the people that want people back in work mm -hmm. they're all boomers you know what mm -hmm. i mean they're all fucking boomers mm -hmm. who are like it's always these old gray-haired bitches who think they know how the world works but they have no fucking idea and they're just it's, like children that way it's an interesting thing because they do have like such a great they're work such a good place. source of knowledge in their workplaces do you know what i mean like yeah. they've taken their jobs very seriously and so a, like a lot of them um know their jobs in and out they know them very well they've probably been in that position for a long time it's like very unusual for people to stay in the same job now for like more than five years i think it is two to five is like the average amount of time that people will stay in a position there's not the same sort of this is my career well, mindset and, I mean, and it's all for different reasons too like yes yeah back then i mean inflation was incredibly reasonable because, yes. Like you could get by on a nine to five jobs on salary 
yeah. slowly getting pay raises for 30 years and buy a house and a car and put your kids through school. And one of the parents could stay home with the kids. And now everything that they want what? is the same thing. But now no one gets to stay home with the kids. No one can afford anything, even though both people are fucking working. Yeah, working and, and very good too, full-time educated jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 that's it too. Like I think there's just easier access to education and more kinds of education. Mm-hmm, it's not mm-hmm. it's not college and university, but you can get certifications for things you need to do the jobs you want. You can mm-hmm. get different kinds of apprenticeships and and on the job training and stuff like that. So I think there's the, a lot the, of the newer... positions where you can start at, and they will educate you as well. That's which true is maybe too, yeah. not always what was the case. And I feel like there's a lot more jobs that are intentionally like short term jobs, like internships mm-hmm. and stuff like that, where they're designed to get you into the workforce, get some experience in that industry for like criminally low salary. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But it's a it's a it's a stepping stone to something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it. I think we're just more flexible, more. I think people these days are, are can be more flexible and more adaptable and, and are more comfortable, you know, pivoting later on in life and saying, you know, I'm, I'm really tired of being a, a muffler mechanic. I, uh, I want to go try something else. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go do ballet. <laughs> hey, you never know. Um, yeah, I didn't want to forget. I, I don't want to forget uh, what I was saying, but... Um, when I told my kids this would have been back in May, I was like, okay, so, and I, I like, I procrastinated telling them hard. Of course. Like I told yeah. them the, the Tuesday morning of the week I was leaving. Cause I was like, one, they could build up resentment if it's been like so long. He, these kids are, are how old? Uh, JK to grade eight. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Quite a, All right. Quite a range. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and I realized how attached I was to them because I started telling them, I was like, so, uh, and then I just started crying <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I didn't think I was going to cry. I'm so sorry. And, uh, I was like, so I'm a surrogate. And I was like, does anybody know what that means? And nobody knew. And I wasn't oh. really surprised because it is yeah. quite a foreign concept, um, but I thought like maybe one of my grade eights might have like heard the term somewhere along the way, you know what I mean? And so um yeah, I I had to teach them what that was. And then part of me was worried if one of these kids goes home and tells their parents, like, my bus driver's a surrogate, there's a lot of people who are like anti surrogacy in the world. Oh, really? I realized. Yeah, I like did not know that. In my experience, like most people are very supportive and we're, we're always like very positive and like the response was always very good. But there was always that little bit of worry in the back of my mind that I was like, I could cross paths with one of these anti surrogacy people, right? And so, and you don't know where or when this might happen. So uh, I was like, I certainly don't want to offend my bus kids parents or their families or whatever right like i don't want to send I my kid on the bus to get a blah. child for someone else and you're worried about other strangers parents oh well that's just like my own personal issue of like needing to be accepted by people that i don't even know uh yeah, talking with my therapist one. about it don't worry <laughs> but um <laughs> Uh oh gosh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I was telling them I was just like, so Friday's gonna be my last day, and I was like, I'm having a really hard time telling you guys this because like, I'm gonna miss you all so much, and I just burst into tears. It was like the saddest thing, and I like, I looked in so many of their faces, and they were all about to cry too, and I was just like, oh, I can't do this, like I can't leave them, and then I felt so guilty, and I was like, I should stay longer, and I was like, I. Can't stay oh long. Like, God, Jenna, that's yeah. So, funny. so I mean, anyways, I, I was like, it. I, yeah, I was be obviously like my heartstrings are being pulled on, you know. Um, but yeah, it all, it all, it, it was fine, and like I gave them little because I couldn't give them my end of year gifts, so I like gave them little treats as my like last day goodbye thing, right. and 
anyways, one of my students was like, can I give you a hug? And I was like, I mean, like, technically, no. But if you hug me, I can't. I can't hug you back. Yeah, 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 but I I can't also push you away. And she was just like, okay. She gave me a hug. And I was like, oh, you're so sweet. So, yeah. um, But how well all of them understood exactly what surrogacy was, I don't know. Like, I I explained it, like, so briefly, right? I was like, well, you see, some families can't have babies on their own. And so a surrogate is somebody who will grow a baby for them. And I was like, and this is what I've been doing. And yeah, I'm sure some of them were like, what in the actual huh? <laughs> are you talking about? Right. Yeah. Can, can um, you just tell me when I get off the bus, please? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. As I'm leaving, just like a little uh, Cole's notes version, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And now I see a bunch of them because uh, the school I drop off at, they do a quick pit stop and drop off a couple kids. Okay. And the first day we realized was like the first week of school, but it wasn't like till Thursday or Friday. And they're in front of me and I'm looking at the front of the bus and I see the bus not route number. And I was like, oh, dang. And so I'm looking in the <laughs> back and I'm seeing them all like interacting with each other. And I'm just smiling, like looking through the window. And then one of them like makes eye contact with me. And I was like, oh, hey, waving. And then he was just like, it took a second because like to see someone waving at you through two panes of glass, like you're kind of like got to focus through it. You know what I mean? And he was like, oh, my God, and starts like hitting the other students around him. And he's like, Jenna. And then we all started like waving like idiots at each other. We were like, oh, my God, like big waves or whatever. And then now if I pull up behind that bus. We do the same stupid wave at each other every day. I'm like, oh, my God. And, like, one girl grew her hair out over the summer. And I was like, your hair, pointing at her hair. It looks so good. Like, thumbs up. And anyways, like, so cheesy. I was like, I don't think I will feel as attached to a group of kids as I did my first group of kids. You know what I mean? Well, your first bus route's a special route, you know? I think so, yeah. It is. And, like, it will never be, like, this year it's not the same because some of them have graduated onto high school and new kids will come on as as new students do. Every year is going to be a brand new, totally different year. But your first year where you're learning the ropes, the ins and outs, what's good, what's not. You are a few stressful scenarios, too. Like, your bus broke down, didn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. And like they sh- I I think the kids shape you as a bus driver too. Like depending on who the kids are that you get, like you have to adapt to that as well, right? So I I think of it that way too. I was like you guys shaped who I am now, right? So and and they they won't know that. How could they? Uh you sorry, I'm not being rude. You you said a lot of great things. <laughs> oh. Did you get a you said funny you, you said adapt to oh. the other to the other kids and you made a Michael Scott reference earlier and my first thought oh, was yes. <laughs> adapt is rule number two. Adapt, react, readapt, apt. <laughs> it's just Oh my god, it's just so fucking mm. funny. Classic. That was that was his uh ten business ten <laughs> ten ten rules of business. Yeah. That show is just priceless. I yeah. It applies to all facets of life, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But there's nothing it doesn't cover. It covers yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. Everything. Anyway. Yeah, I think uh I'll stop blubbering on. Uh yeah, thank you for listening holy to fuck. me. God. <laughs> we can talk about more um, interesting things besides growing humans. Yeah. Next time. Next time, we'll come up with something crazy. What kind of <laughs> animals will we talk about next episode? Well, we can't talk about the big cats or other ferocious animals. So maybe maybe some, some aquatic ones. We've been reading Predators with Anson at night. So we know all kinds of Chris insects. Uh, I don't know. It's a National Geographic There's no book. GameCube. Where's the GameCube? No, I to catch know. a predator. I was a. Uh... Oh. I didn't see it. I'm sorry. You never heard the show? 
I don't think so. To catch a predator? Catch it was a predator. Uh, it was where they'd sting do sting operations and pretend they were young kids and <gasps> No. Yeah, to catch a and predator. And they caught all kinds of people? Oh yeah, Chris Hansen, yeah. Damn. Oh my god. There's a I mean, I like the skit. I'll, I'll send it to you separately. Uh, if okay. it's appropriate, we can post it. But uh, <laughs> to catch a predator. Uh, I mean, we can put the link and just be like, warning, this is not appropriate for many audiences. You know? There was, there was one like funny skit where they were kind of doing the spoof of the thing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it like Chad's and Kyle's or something crazy. Oh, boy. Yeah. They open up his backpack and there's a GameCube and a six pack of beer and stuff. It's like, it, it was a spoof off to catch a predator. So he wasn't trying to hook up with a child. He was trying uh, to okay. like be a bro with a friend kind of thing. But anyway, mm-hmm, they, did mm-hmm. good, they did a good spoof on it. Nice. But, all right. Yeah. Next time uh, we'll talk about not you for the whole episode. Cool. We we'll can talk, talk about, about uh, how expensive GameCubes are on the internet. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, that'll be your homework for anybody. I don't think anyone plays GameCube anymore, though. Like you have to be that's, a diehard gamer. That's a sin because uh, Legend of Zelda. I guess Legend of Zelda would have been N sixty four, but you could also get it on GameCube. So. Could you get it on like normal people consoles? No one plays GameCube. You're either PlayStation or Xbox now. Like there's no in between. And Switch. there's those Isn't losers that play the Switch. Yeah, that's, that's, children. Slash me. Like, I, I, I think I'm a, I feel like this, this, I've talked about this with Jordan. So there's like Pepsi people and there's Coke people and there's PlayStation people and there's Nintendo people and there's Xbox, like there's whatever. I would say you it's know, Nintendo and everything else. Nintendo and everything else. Okay. Because everything else has every other game, but you can only play Nintendo games on Nintendo systems. Correct. Yeah. There's no like PlayStation only games or Xbox. They're not only games. sharing. Yeah, they're not good yeah. at sharing. <laughs> yeah, Nintendo's fucking yeah. weird like that. But the Switch is a genius product. Exclusivity. Yeah, I agree. It's a really smart product. The Wii was dumb. But the Switch is sweet. It was redeeming. Yeah. Yeah. Because the Wii was like it was novelty, but after a while, you're like, I'm really sick and tired of throwing my hands at the screen. Mm-hmm. And how many TVs were destroyed? So many, so, so many, fun. and uh, and now they have VR, so that VR is just taking over that whole. VR is insanity. Yeah, because oh, I, was, I, was I haven't VR. used it, but I agree with you. Anyways, we should we'll save yeah, this. No, one we're gonna we're gonna yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll never end this. Okay, hey, never. thanks okay. for thanks for coming out. Appreciate this. Yeah. And till next uh, time. Till, till next time. Arriba, Nerchi. Oh, no.